these four amazing boxers have one thing in common. They all started in the Georgia Amateur Boxing Program, ran by the legendary Buddy Davis. I've known Buddy Davis. I've been knowing Buddy Davis. Mr. Davis. Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis. I met Buddy Davis. I've been knowing Buddy Davis. I've known Buddy Davis since I was born. I've been knowing Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis. I've been knowing 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 Buddy Davis. I met Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis, and I've been involved in boxing for some 55 years. Well, we uh, we were members of a, of a JC club, Junior Chamber of Commerce, uh, called JCs, uh, that had as our number one project uh, the Youth Assistance Program, and uh, we had a, a boys club there in the community that needed uh, needed a new facility. And uh, we we uh, obligated to help raise funds to build a new building there in Lakewood. And uh, once we got the thing uh, built and and up and running, uh, the boys' club had a boxing team, and we decided as a as a club to uh, to host a little Metro Atlanta. Uh, amateur boxing show there in the club, and uh, they said you're gonna be the chairman. I, said, <laughs> well, I don't know anything about it, but I, you know, we'll do the best we can with it. Buddy Davis is an unbelievable human being, but just talking about Buddy Davis wouldn't suffice if I didn't mention Bo Davis because it's a pair, it's a, it's a couple. Uh, I've been knowing them for almost. 40 years, and Buddy has been the backbone and the foundation for amateur boxing. Uh, this is the only group of uh, presidents within the amateur boxing that have put four, four Olympians on a team consecutively. And I had the opportunity to work with him when I was a kid. Uh, with Evander Holyfield, Evander and I, we grew up together, and I saw how Buddy and Bo mentored all of the all of the kids on the boxing team. Uh, it was an extended family. Uh, they pretty much gave their life, and Buddy gave his life as a patriarch, as the head of the family, as as a servant. And from his ability to be able to serve others and relate to others and make sure that they got got what they needed to be successful in life, uh, my hat goes off to Buddy. Uh, I love him, you know, I love him like a father. You know, Buddy, Buddy David had a great program, and without this program, I wouldn't be who I am. The heavyweight champion of the world from Atlanta, Georgia, Evander Real Hill. all started back in southeast Atlanta at the Warrens Memorial Boys Club uh, where Evander Holyfield uh, and I attended. Uh, from there I had an opportunity to meet Buddy and Bo and at that time they were uh, using their their vehicle to carry boxers uh, to various tournaments and, and things of that nature. And from that moment on, I had an opportunity to be a part of his program, his amateur boxing program, to make sure that the athletes that I was working with, such as uh, Vernon Forrest, 1992 Olympian, and Rasheed Wells, uh, 1996 Olympian, were uh, placed in uh, a productive environment so that they could be the best that they could possibly be. I was nine years old. When I first entered a tournament, it was at the Boys Club, Warren Memorial Boys Club. Um, and, and I remember fighting that I, I won it. That's my first time seeing uh, 
Bo Dave and Barbara Davis, uh, uh, Bo uh, wife, and and so from that point on, we came to the Junior Olympics and and, and I, I remember getting in the Junior Olympics and uh, pretty much that's what it was, you know, this this amateur boxing and and and, and the federation was pretty big then. You know, we used to box at the fairground. And, you know, I did real well. I did I did pretty much well every year. And you know, and we had a stiff competition all the time and and I was the one that would win at the junior we go to South Carolina, Tennessee, or Alabama, you know, in that, that region five and these these five places that that the, the purpose was you went you you always start at home, you went at the fairground, then you go fight somewhere else. My name is Mike Vale. I'm a City of Atlanta police officer. I've been a police officer for about 20 years now. I moved to Atlanta in 1997 from St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I think around 1999 I got involved in amateur boxing. I started coaching kids with our police athletic league at the Powell Center. And that's when I first met Buddy Davis, so I've known him a, a good 17, 18 years now. You know, Buddy Davis has contributed so much to the amateur program here in Atlanta, Georgia, the Georgia Amateur Boxing Association. I, I believe that he's probably one of the very few presidents across the country that's produced as many Olympians coming out of this LBC. You know, with, 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 with one of them being started would be Vanna Holyfield, Vernon Forrest, Rashai Wells, Ramalis Ellis. Uh, great lineups of great amateurs and great pros. My name is Ramalis, Big Shot Ellis. Started boxing in 1981 with Buddy Davis. Gave me opportunities to see the whole world, 22 countries. Uh, and I have to let you know that when they call my name, Romalis Ellis, I take a step. After I fight, after I win, Romalis Ellis, I take another step. Buddy started the Georgia Amateur Boxing Association along with a few of his friends. And uh, that was over 50 years ago. They started the club in 1963 and uh, Buddy has a long history with many champions who come from Georgia and the amateur boxing program helped develop them. Bo Davis was a, as much a part of the Georgia Amateur Boxing Association as Buddy was. She was not only his partner as his wife, she was a partner in life. And I first met uh, Buddy and Bo Davis about 30 years ago. Uh, I've been involved in amateur boxing now for about 32 years, I think, and so I met Buddy when I first came into the sport, and my, my, what a, what a friendship and a relationship we've developed uh, over the years, and uh, I can't say enough good things about Buddy and Bo Davis and how uh, I've watched them embrace young people and bring them into their home and take them all over the country, all over the world, boxing, and uh, he's been such a role model to me. Uh, as a man, as a father, as a boxing coach, and, and uh, I love him like a father. Shout out to my boy Buddy Davis. What's up, baby? It's your boy Zab Super Judah. You're yeah, Brooklyn's finest. Yeah. Buddy has developed so many kids. He has a heart of gold, and his late wife, Bo, you never saw one, you didn't see the other. They were always together. They always took them in as if they were their own kids, and they got each kid that they brought through any program that they had, they were part of Buddy's family. Um, they've kept pictures, they've supported him, they've followed him through. Buddy has always been there. And he's one of the nicest men I've ever met in boxing. I actually started boxing in 66 uh, when Mr. Buddy Davis was with the JCs and was the president of the JCs and they decided to support boxing. And I started boxing when he had been doing it about two years. He's, uh, he really enjoyed boxing. He, uh, one thing is, he's, I, I'm glad to see he's lived to see uh, what, what his contributions have brought back. Uh, uh, he enjoys doing it. He's always been involved in the community, even before boxing and the JCs. He loves giving back, working working with people, giving giving them opportunities. 
I remember when Buddy, it must have been back in 2001, he had a massive heart attack. And a lot of people didn't think he was going to make it. Um, but he did, he recovered from that, and that didn't stop him at all, that didn't slow him down. He's, he's gone to the same amount of tournaments, he's been at all the shows every weekend, you see him at a different boxing show, helping out, doing the administrative work. And um, you know, I remember when he had that heart attack, you know, it's kind of, you know, a lot of people didn't think he was going to make it, but not only did he make it, it never slowed him down, and he's still, he's still, you know, at, all the time you see him at all the shows, and he's still on the trail helping us. June, I'm supposed to go to Dallas uh, for the National Junior and Youth Championship. So we'll be, we stay and be real busy with that, and then I'm thoroughly enjoying it because I've got a, you know, got a lot of good friends on that on that national level that I enjoy seeing and working with. Of course, supporting our boxers. So it's been a, it's, it's still a, still a lot of fun. It's been over the Georgia Amateur Boxing Program for decades. I've seen a lot of good fighters come through. Uh, he's been a real inspiration to the sport of boxing, especially for uh, Georgia. Uh, as far as I know, I don't know what, how many other states that have four straight Olympians that come through out of their state, but uh, Buddy has been an instrumental to all those guys, and including myself, um, just watching young men grow up and guys that he mentored in the sport. What I remember a lot about Buddy Davis, he was a gentleman, him and his wife, they would give their last dime for their boxing. He always was there supporting his guys 100%. I remember Grogan, he supported him. Hurd, he supported him. Uh, Vernon Forrest, Holyfield, all those different guys that he always took a, took a liking to. And not only them, he all the Finney brothers. He also was a guy that worked with uh, had worked some of the Finneys, but I know they gave a lot of monies uh, and things to the amateur boxing. Uh, you know, he was a president and, and of, of Georgia, and he had a strong uh, position also with the amateur boxing. So him and his wife were 1,000 percent. I think they were helped responsible for the 1980 Olympics being in Atlanta, Georgia. I think they were also responsible for that happening. Uh, Lauren Baker, another guy who was a president of the, of the Amateur Boxing Federation, he also supported him 1,000%. I knew Buddy since 1986 when I moved to Atlanta, Georgia from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Buddy and I first encounter came at, uh, at the Golden Gloves at the, uh, the Farmer's Market where uh, I came over to compete and Buddy uh, told me that I needed to lose two pounds when I got on the scale. Gave me an hour to go lose the two pounds. I went outside and put my sweat gear on and went jogging, came back in, and I was two pounds lighter. He said, okay, great job. He allowed me to fight in the Golden Gloves. That was my first encounter with Buddy Davis. Since that, uh, that time, I competed as an amateur boxer here in, in Georgia for a while, retired and I uh, came back to uh, help out here at the Paul Murphy Boxing Gym before taking the Paul Murphy Boxing Gym over. And then I uh, became vice president to assist Buddy here, uh, vice president of the Georgia Amateur Boxing and worked right beside Buddy Davis. He and I got a great relationship. I met Buddy through, through Reggie Williams, who, who was at the Omni. And the Georgia Golden Gloves at the finals had always been at the uh, farmer's market and Reggie got the uh, finals moved over to the Omni. Uh, and that was probably around 1989. Uh, Buddy was a great guy. Uh, my agency did pro bono work for Buddy for the years he was over at the, uh, at the Omni. And uh, there were some great boxers that came through. And uh, one person that I remember uh, was Michael Grogan, who later uh, was with the Olympic team. Uh, I always will, will remember Poncho Carter from Augusta because I, the way he knocked out this one boxer was unbelievable. Buddy was selfless. He was all, he did any, anything he could to help the boxers, and they weren't just boxers uh, for Buddy. They they were like his family. They were like his like his kids. And uh, worked with a lot of people over the years, but I can say that uh, Buddy Davis is a genuine, genuine person. Buddy has been a great asset to boxing in Georgia. He's a straight up guy. And, uh, He's a, a, a good boxing person. You know, he's very fair in how he treats people. And uh, I got a lot of respect for Buddy. I'm the only person that wasn't ranked that was in a tournament. And 
Rose Bell Sanders said, we'll give you an opportunity. You know, you know, you got to win. Every day you spar, you got to win the spar. Cause whoever wins the spar, this is this is the people who are gonna be in uh be in a uh, uh, sports sports fest. And you know, and you know, at this time, and this when it, uh, I met this guy named Ricky Womack. And, and everybody talked about how good he was and all this. And, and it was Michael Rogan that told, told, told Womack and said, I don't care what you do, because Womack, Womack was light heavy and heavyweight. He ranked number one heavyweight and light heavy at the same time. And Michael Rogan told him, you know, we brought somebody for you. If you're in light heavyweight division, you won't win light heavy. We got somebody for you. We got one in Georgia. But man, I, I whoop in the Georgia, but I whoop this behind now. He said, where you at? Michael Rogan said, he right behind me. He looked at me. He didn't smile, I ain't smile. He looked and, it's, and started back arguing with Mike. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we weigh in and all this. And, and you know, uh, we end up, we end up in the final. Me and, me and him. And you know, and, and, and what happened, everybody said, ain't no way in the world Holyfield gonna be, be there. Everybody said, I'm trying to tell you, man, that Holyfield can fight. Womack, before the fight started, he stopped my toe before he got, wow! Like this, and I, I reach and show up, rub my toe, like this, and so, you know, the tears started falling my eyes. And I remember this kid saying, God, he crying already. He crying already. <laughs> and I just, but I knew if I jump home right then and there, they, they gonna send me home, cause he was ranked number one. I wasn't ranked at all. And all of a sudden, we get in that ring, everybody usually run for Womack. That bell ring, I ran, Time he took one step out of that, hit him right in the mouth, boy. And and all of a sudden, everybody said, they called him Man Stewart and they told him Man Stewart. They said, hey, there's a guy named Holyfield. He chased Womack around the ring. Man, Womack gonna run for better. Said, Watch it, it's on ABC television. You find in life that don't nobody have it all. Like that. And so, you know, uh, I'm, so, I'm so glad uh, this amateur program that Buddy Davis then ran for so long, gave me this opportunity. Uh, Buddy served as the president, Bo served as the secretary, the treasurer, and she also served as a support for the amateur boxers when Buddy was a team manager and took teams across the country and in international competition, Bo would always be there. She was the backbone of the organization. Uh, we were unfortunate in losing her recently but I had the pleasure of attending their 50th wedding anniversary, my family and I. Uh, they were a couple, and uh, they provided support for anyone who was associated with, with amateur boxing, not just Georgia amateur boxing. One particular story that sticks out the most about Buddy Davis and Bo was uh, I had a, uh, a youth boxer back in about 2002. I took him up to Macon, Georgia to compete, and uh, he didn't have his book on him, and I thought that we had taken the trip for no reason. But of course, being Bo and Buddy, the individuals that they are, they came up with a great solution. They said, why don't we just give, cut off one of the sheets of the, of the booklet, let's get a chance to compete. And that was actually his first fight, and uh, it was a great experience. He went on to win, and uh, in that particular story, the one, the one thing that stood out the most is the fact that they're the type of individuals that will make it happen when it comes to the kids. When it comes to the kids and the amateur programs, they'll do whatever it takes. Uh, we've had a lot of good times together, worked a lot of tournaments together, uh, and we share a common interest outside of boxing. We, uh, we both uh, uh, love docks and dogs, and I'll never forget uh, uh, Buddy's dog died, and boy, broke his heart, and I drove down to, to I found a puppy, and uh, a dachshund puppy, and drove down to a boxing match in Atlanta, and Buddy put that little puppy in his lap, and he still got that same puppy today. Uh, so we have a good time with that as well. Uh, so just a great friend, a great man, and um, 
uh, have given so much to, to the sport of amateur boxing. There's no better than, uh, than Buddy Davis and before him and his companion, Bo. We miss her greatly. Um, Buddy is just a true, genuine character of a man. Very, very dedicated to the program. Very dedicated to all of his kids. And I've never, I've, since I've been 12 years old, and I'm 51 now, I have never in my life heard Buddy Davis say a negative thing about anybody, ever. Not a negative thing about a boxer, a coach, or anybody ever around him, ever. Uh, the Davises have a long history of being with the amateur boxing. Uh, they did tremendously did a wonderful job with uh, the teams or the people that they had in Georgia. He kept bringing them along, and, uh, and he's always been a fair, straight-up guy who always very cheerful and joyful. Uh, as a whole, uh, there's a guy you can't beat 1,000%. Buddy Davis is a father, coach, mentor. He's a great man of integrity. He's a man who you can, who he means what he says, and he says what he means. An incredible man. An incredible, devoted man who loves the sport of amateur boxing. Has done uh, more than anybody could have ever done. Probably more than any other president in the country. Because that would have been early 60s till, till now. How long is that? 50 plus years. 50 plus years. He headed up the Georgia program and saw a lot of great talent come out of Georgia. And he just enjoys doing it. He enjoys the sport of boxing, um, enjoys the fellowship, um, made a lot of good friends through the years. Means a lot to him. Buddy Davis is a significant piece of amateur boxing and just boxing as a whole. He's one of the only LBC leaders in the country probably who's ever created and produced as many Olympians as he has. And I, I remember every time I saw Buddy, I always saw Bo. They were inseparable. Uh, when a person didn't have a flight ticket, <laughs> who raised the money? Buddy and Bo. Uh, when a person didn't have uh, the, the right credentials or whatever, a birth certificate to be able to compete in the amateur tournaments, when they were peewee leagues, who made sure that the parents were contacted and they walked them through the process to make sure that the fighter could fight at the tournaments, Buddy and Bo. I met Buddy when I was 18 years old. That's 30 years ago. Buddy and Bo, because you can't mention Buddy Davis without mentioning his wife, Bo. They have exemplified what we need in today's society as far as the mentors, the way uh, president heads an organization such as the GABA, and they have always been like the greatest, nicest people ever. And I believe that I speak on behalf of all the people that I didn't have time to get in the documentary because if I would have filmed everyone and interviewed everyone that has a good thing to say about Buddy and Bo Davis, this would never come to an end. So I believe I speak on behalf of all of them in saying congratulations on your lifetime achievement. I come to realize how good I had it when I was like a senior in high school. I had, I was playing varsity football and baseball. And I was the regimental commander of our ROTC unit. And uh, I had a brand new automobile that my dad bought for me. And I had as a as a uh, all-time sweetheart, prettiest girl in the school as my girlfriend. So I had it made big time, man. <laughs> and then, so buddy, you and Bo were high school sweethearts. That's right. So you met in what year? I had my <laughs> on my 16th birthday. My mom took me to get my driver's license. I borrowed my dad's car that night and had my first date with Bo. <laughs> 16 years old. And now. Uh, and what year were you married? That was, uh, oh, let's see, I don't know what year it was. I guess about 1949. And then 
we became real good sweethearts through our junior and senior year in high school and uh, we graduated high school in June and we got married in October. October that, that same year. Of 49. Yeah. And wow. then we, uh, we, of course, lived together for 61 years. So